Hey you guys, Apogee just released a new firmware update to their Symfony desktop, update 1.19. Uh, and even though there are a few other updates coming down the pike, I thought it'd be fun to take a look at uh, some new things that they implemented, including their monitor effects, print effects, and dual path workflows. Uh, let's take a look. All right, so the first thing I wanted to uh, check out real quick are some new things that they implemented in the interface of the Symphony desktop itself before we take a look at how that all integrates with your recording software. So I'm in channel two here. I've got my bass plugged into it. Same as before, you can choose your preamp here, but this looks a little different. Uh, this is the uh, Neve preamp emulation, and then this is their 50s tube, and this is their sort of standard neutral Apogee uh, preamp. So let's just choose the Neve. And you see this little knob right here, this little icon, if you hit that, then the interface changes to something that looks a little bit more like the device that it's emulating. So again, this is the Neve. This is what the 50s tube interface looks like. And uh, you know, whereas it's cool, I tend to prefer the old interface just because it's a little cleaner, it's a little clearer more information on there, and uh, it's a little easier to see what's going on. All right, let's take a look at what else they did here. So when we swipe to this page, there's two sections now that are active that were not before, the print effects rack and the monitor effects rack. So both of those allow you to run effects right on the internal DSP of the Symphony desktop. The only difference between the two is that with the print effects rack, whatever effects that you use will be, as the name implies, printed onto the track that you're recording, and you can't change it after the fact. Now, when you use the monitor effects rack, those effects, even though you're hearing them while you're tracking, they're not being printed into your recording software. In other words, they're, again, as the name implies, just for monitoring. There's a really, really clever way um, that this integrates with your recording software, and we'll look at that in a minute. But for the time being, let's just try these out. So, print effects rack, I'm going to turn them on with this button here. You can open them here. And you see this interface here. You can hit the plus. And as you can see here, you can choose the ECS channel strip, which is a really great sort of one stop shop that Apogee has. It's an EQ, it's compression, it's saturation. Really useful. Down the line, they're going to activate these other ones, the opto compressor and their pull tech EQs and all of that stuff. But for now, those are not yet available. But we can hit the ECS channel strip. As you can see, it's now instantiated here. You can turn the power button on and off. You could hit the little trash can to get rid of it. You could hit the, the plus to add more stuff down the line. But let's just open this up. And as with the ECS channel strip that runs in your recording software, there's a whole EQ section. And you hit the down button here, there's compression, uh, different settings for that, drive for your saturation, and then an output level. For bass, sometimes what I like to do is hit the uh, EQ and lower the frequency to around 45 hertz, and just turn up the level by a couple dB. Maybe have a little bit of uh, compression, not too much, and turn a little bit of drive. So let's just see what that looks like in, in my case, Logic. I'll make an audio track. Make sure that the input is set to input 2, which is what my bass is plugged into on the uh, Symphony desktop. Can get rid of this other one. Levels look good. And so again, on here, I have my print effects on. And so whatever I record right now is going to have those effects baked in. And so that may or may not work for you to commit to these effects when you're recording. If you'd rather not commit to them, we can close this out. And we can turn off our print effects and we can turn on our monitor effects. And the interface is basically the same as you can see here. One thing that's pretty clever is across the top here, you can, you know, select your preamps. You can actually like mess with your print effects and or your monitor effects. 
And if I like the settings that I just had in print effects, I can just hit this button right here. It says copy to monitor effects. I don't know if you can read it. Um, so let's just do that. Confirm that. And so now the same settings that we had before in our print effects are now in our monitor effects. Before we go any further, I do want to make the distinction between software monitoring and direct monitoring. People seem to prefer to work in one or the other. Both are perfectly valid ways to work. Basically what it boils down to is if you are using software monitoring, you are listening back to whatever you're recording off of the tracks in your recording software. It means that you usually have to deal with a little bit of latency. You have to set your buffer size low enough to where the latency isn't driving you crazy. But it is a way that a lot of people like to work and everything that we've done up until this point works within the software monitoring workflow. What we're about to look at, monitor effects, only works when you're using direct monitoring. Most modern audio interfaces have a feature where you can listen to the tracks that you're recording directly off of the interface without first making a round trip through your recording software. And so as a result, you don't have to deal with latency while you're tracking. On the Symphony desktop, it looks something like this. When you go to your settings up here, right here on the first page, you see that my main out, which is going to my speakers, is set to mixer one. And then my headphones are both set to follow, which just means that they follow whatever my uh, main out is set to. So when we click on this, your choices are playbacks, mixers, and hardware inputs. Playback just means whatever's coming off of your recording software. Hardware inputs, whatever's plugged directly into your Symphony desktop. And then mixers is a combination of the two, and that's what we're going to be using. Uh, you have two separate mixers that you can use and send to either your speakers or your headphone outputs or a combination of uh, all of those. And if we close this out, let's take a look at that actual mixer, and that's the little icon down here. We click on that. This is mixer one. This is mixer two. Um, and as you can see, it basically represents everything that's going on audio-wise. Your two analog inputs are right here. Your optical inputs are represented right here, which I'm not using currently, as I said before. These are your playback channels from your computer, and then uh, a stereo master to tie it all together. So basically using the mixer allows you to listen to what's coming off of your computer, you know, tracks that you've already recorded, and then mixed in with whatever is directly plugged into your audio interface. So that's, in a nutshell, direct monitoring. And it allows us to do what I'm about to show you with monitor effects. And also a little bit later, we'll be looking at the dual path workflow. And that basically refers to two different paths. Uh, one that is going on directly on the interface itself. And then whatever is coming off your computer. Before we do anything, let me make sure that my print effects are off. Yes, they are off. My monitor effects are on. And now I can play. And I can record something. And even though I was hearing it with the effects when I play it back, might be a little hard to hear, but that is a clean, dry signal from my bass. And then after the fact, I can, you know, obviously add any sort of EQ or compression, whatever I desire. So that's monitor effects as they run on the Symphony desktop. Now, the most interesting implementation of this is called dual path. And it's sort of the best of all worlds of what we have looked at so far. And um, here, I'll show you how that goes. So I'm just going to mute this one. I'll double, I'll copy this, uh, this track here so we can kind of start fresh. So within Logic, here's how dual path works. Uh, you go into your audio effects and you go to your Apogee effects. As you can see, I have all their EQs and compressors and all that good stuff installed here. But the one we're looking at right now is called channel effects. And here's what that looks like. The first thing we need to do is under channel link here, link this to the input channel that we're connected to right now. And that links this plugin to the relevant channel in the Symphony desktop. It's going to ask if I want to keep the effects settings as they are on the uh, Symphony desktop or in my DAW and Logic. I'm going to choose hardware for now. 
And so as you can see already, you know, we're looking at the monitor effects. This is exactly how we had it on the Symphony desktop. Now, before we do anything else, let's go up top here and look at these different sections. There's the preamp section. And the best way to look at this is as a remote control for what's happening on the Symphony desktop. We're looking at the interface here for the uh, Neve preamp, but that does not mean that there is some sort of preamp emulation running within Logic. This is really just a reflection of what's going on on the Symphony desktop. And so if we go to our settings here on the Symphony desktop, if I change something here, you can see that it's also changing here in Logic. And again, this right here in Logic, it's just a mirror of what's going on on the Symphony desktop. Same with the print effects. I can open these up, and if I go to my print effects and turn those on and open this interface, I can change something here, and it'll change within Logic as well, as you can see. Or I can change something here, and then it'll also be reflected on the Symphony desktop. And so same as before, what you're looking at here is really just a remote control for what's running on the internal DSP of the Symphony desktop. The monitor effects, this is where that dual path thing happens, and it's really clever how they implemented this. So unlike the preamp and the print effects section, in monitor effects, this plugin is actually running within Logic on this particular track. And it is also running on my Symphony desktop. And because they are linked, whatever settings I change in one is going to be changed in the other as well. Turn on my monitor effects. Open those up. There we go. And so, as before, I can change my settings in Logic. And you can see that it's changing on the Symphony desktop as well. And vice versa, I can do one of these. Um, but unlike with the other two, these are actually two separate plugins. One that's running here on the Symphony desktop, another one that's running here within Logic. And there's a very specific reason why they do this. So essentially what this enables you to do is to track with the plugin instantiated on the Symphony desktop. When it records into Logic, it records it clean and dry without the effects printed onto it, like we did in this little second example here. But then also within Logic, you have this plugin instantiated. And so when you play it back, it's playing it back through this Logic plugin, but you can change it after the fact. And so that's the whole trick with this whole thing. You can listen to it in the exact way that you want to hear it and make it super pleasing to you whether it's a mic or a bass or whatever else that you are recording, make it sound exactly like you want it to, but you're recording it clean. And then after the fact, you can change whatever you had in the plugin that's running within Logic or get rid of this plugin altogether and use something else if that's how you prefer it. Let's just record something and see how it works in practice. Pull this aside a little bit. So I recorded that um, and I was hearing it in the way that I want to hear it with the plugin on it. I can now, for instance, turn the whole Apogee channel effects off. And turn it back on. And because this plugin is now running in real time in Logic, after we've recorded it, I can change settings on here and you'll hear it reflected in what's playing back. So that's pretty great. The fact that you can really make things sound like you wanted to sound while you're recording without having to commit to all those settings and then still be able to change them afterwards is really rad. 
One other thing I'd like to point out real quick is that after you've recorded stuff with this method, with dual path, you can unplug your Apogee interface and everything will still work exactly the same. Those plugins are still part of your session. They still work. Your audio interface does not need to be hooked up to your computer for all of this stuff to work. And for me, as a musician who spends a fair amount of time on the road, that's huge. I don't always want to bring a separate audio interface. If I'm going on a fairly short trip, I just want to bring my computer and be done with it. And with this, you can open up any session that you've recorded before using this dual path method, and they'll open up just the same. I and mean, I think that's a pretty great feature. One more little thing here uh, on this plugin, you can see this strip uh, on the side, and that's basically sort of like a mirror of the Apogee control um, software, which is the software that runs in the background that uh, lets you change a whole bunch of stuff about the Symphony desktop. Um, these are your input channels, your playback channels right here from the computer. You can have your optical channels on or off. Since I don't have anything plugged into my optical, I have that turned off. These are your mixers, mixer one and mixer two on your Symphony desktop, system settings over here, and then your output section over here. But essentially, since we are linked to input two, analog input two on the Symphony desktop, all of that is reflected right here. And so it's essentially this strip right here. So yeah, uh, dual path, it's pretty great. Um, I'm really looking forward to when Apogee activates those other plugins so that I can use Opto Compressor and the Pultec EQs and all that good stuff and do the same thing that I just did here. Um, craft the exact tone that I want while I'm tracking. Still have that be reflected after I'm done recording within Logic, but not having to commit to it, which is really, really great. One last thing that I want to show you is that in a future firmware update for the Symphony desktop, they're going to let you save presets that include preamp selection, print effects, and monitor effects, and that's going to be great. But for the time being, what you can do is that within Logic, you can save this as a preset. And so, for instance, uh, let's say that I open my library here, I hit save. Uh, SMD test. And here we go. Um, and let's say that I, you know, change a whole bunch of settings here, uh, whatever. I have my print effects, I'm turning those on, and my preamp is a different selection. And so then I can basically make a new audio channel just for the sake of argument. And here is my preset that I saved. It's asking me if I want to keep what's going on in Logic, which that's what I want right now, right? Because I saved this preset within Logic, so I'm going to do that. And here we go. The correct preamp is selected, and the correct settings for print effects and monitor effects are selected as well. So that's a nice workaround for the time being, that you can save a patch within Logic that retains all the settings that you like for different instruments or for different microphones or for different vocalists or anything like that. So yeah, pretty cool. Looking forward to more updates, but this is a pretty great one so far. I hope you enjoy it. Bye.